<clears throat> okay, so today I have the pleasure of interviewing a lovely lady. Um, her name is Gillian Reed, and she has a, a very heartwarming story to tell, as well as um, how she's conquered what she's been through and how she is now ready and willing and poised for helping you guys. So, and I thought this is the perfect opportunity uh, for me to um, interview her and introduce her to you. So I'm gonna welcome in our lovely Jean. Hello. So, hi Jean. Hello. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> good, good. So, um, so have you done many interviews before? No, I haven't. I haven't. So I'm very new to this. Very new. Oh, you do amazing. You do amazing. I haven't interviewed very many people. So, you know, there is that, you know, I've chatted with people, but that's different than interviewing, isn't it? So it is. can you tell us a little bit about um, how you started on your journey, how you knew or maybe even childhood, how that kind of came into this story. Yes, well, this is, it's quite interesting, but probably to other psychics, it's not that that interesting. As a child, um, I always seemed to know things, but I didn't know why I knew them. And as a child, strangely enough, I didn't speak until I was about three years old. Um, much to the disgust of my grandfather, who thought I was deaf and dumb. Um, but when I did speak at the age of about three, I spoke in full sentences and everybody around was absolutely astounded. But clearly, um, all through that three years, I was having telepathic conversations with my guides, who were always around me and um, I was communicating with them. So I didn't need to speak. Um, but from three, I, I spoke normally um, and, I, you know, I was always very well liked as a child uh, going up through school. I was always very popular, but I never really felt as though I fitted in anywhere. I didn't really belong anywhere. And that, again, is part of the psychic journey. You, you, you just don't feel like you belong. But everything was normal after that. I, I just kind of lived with it and grew up, moved on, uh, went into a, a career. And I, for many decades, worked for the NHS as a cardiac physiologist. I specialised in echocardiography, which is ultrasound for the heart. Um, and I was a manager of some large departments of teaching hospitals um, and then I I got married and had a, a beautiful son um, that was after a slight interlude um, where I had gone into a corporate job and travelled the world selling and demonstrating ultrasound equipment attending um, corporate events uh, and it was fantastic I had a great life there and then I got married had my son and uh, my then husband travelled for work as well. So my life then became quite small in terms of where I ventured to because I was at home with my son, raising him mostly on my own because the, my husband at the time travelled for work. Yeah. Um, so I, I raised, raised my son. Um, and then the behaviour of my husband changed quite dramatically and it turned out to put it all in a nutshell he was really quite a an extreme narcissist um and there yeah. we have the empath because i am a psychic empath the empath yeah. narcissist paradigm um and from there on things started to unfold and it, it wasn't a nice situation uh, he had many addictions um, he was a really very uh, abusive man uh, and it came to the point that um, he actually tried to unalive me. Um, yeah, oh my God. And I had to escape basically, so uh, that that ended, mm. but uh, as narcissists don't like to be 
the ones who finished things after that there was a whole uh, nasty period ensued however we've we've come out of that um th there were um very tricky situations um he, he he basically wanted to ruin my life, like many of them do. They want to bring you to yeah. your knees. They want to steal all your money. They want to, you know, make you homeless. Uh, whatever they. If you're not do, mine, then you're not gonna, you're not gonna have a life if you're not mine. That kind of energy. Yes, absolutely, and it is very common. Um, they're very good actors, these people, though, and they suck people in. And he was a big, he was a CBO of a of a big company, so. Who are they going to believe, you know? Are they going to believe him or are they going to believe a housewife? And this happens time and time and time again, actually. Uh, so many yeah. stories uh, and it, it actually has to stop. Um, yes. But yeah. there are people in higher places that they befriend or that they do favours for or they do favours for them. And, uh, you know, y you, you, don't, um, you don't win. And there are right. connect, he has connections to um, groups that would be known to people with psychic ability. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm very aware of that. Uh, I've been told that. So um, Above all of that, you've kind of shone your light out. Yeah. And you've decided, do you know what? He's not going to beat me. Yeah. So tell no, us about has... your climb up. From there, tell us about how you how you said enough is enough, and this is my life. I'm taking back my life. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as you know, synchronicities present themselves, and yep. I was led out of the blue to um, learn how to do Reiki. And initially, I learned it for myself. I thought I, I was interested, and I. I thought, well, that would be quite nice to be able to do treatments on myself. Um, and I went and I did Reiki 1 and 2. And then I actually went on and I did 3, which is the master uh, level. And then I went and learned how to be a teacher. So I'm trained on all four levels. So I'm a Reiki master practitioner and master teacher. And I wow. also... I'm a crystal therapist as well. I like crystals. I use crystals. I have an affinity to crystals. They talk to me. I'm very, very sensitive to the vibrations and the healing qualities of them. So that's really lovely. And um, I volunteered for nearly three years, actually, at the Arthur Conan Doyle Centre in Edinburgh. And uh, I trained alongside some famous psychic mediums which was lovely and I was in that environment and I really feel that that's where um, Gordon Smith, Tony Stockwell, yep. and Lisa Gordon. Williams yeah. and Lisa Williams as you know she does the psychic investigation work which was fascinating yeah. and I, I, I've obviously um, taken on some of that training and used it in some of my own work <laughs> which has been quite exciting. Yeah. I've been told quite a lot of things uh, very interesting information um, most psychics only get little snippets but obviously as a as a, a team you can build up quite a picture and that is actually how Lisa Williams works she she has a team of psychics and they all channel different bits and then it's all put together and it's actually sent to the police forces, the FBI, um, mm -hmm. in America. Um, and from there, they built up the picture. It's re it is really fascinating. I, I, I really love that side of things as well because it was a different arm yeah. of the work that we can do and that we do do. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I but love it because I... I work along with a, um, a lady who's connected with the FBI and mm -hmm. I do that once a month and, you know, um, pick up on all sorts of, you know, trafficking rings and all sorts of that, getting information. So it's lovely to get the feedback as well. You, know, you don't always get the feedback when you, 
because I've had to uh, contact the police and, and and let them know things, which is really, you know, you think they're going to laugh at you, don't you? You think they're not going to take us seriously, are they? Just go, oh, another bloody psychic on the phone. <laughs> but, you know, so it, it's, it's it rewarding, isn't it? It's very rewarding. Much so. Yeah, and and <clears throat> the, the police do actually use psychics much much they more. Do. Much they do much more. Yeah, mm. much more. Mm. it is. It's it's fascinating. However, I while I was at the Conan Doyle, obviously I um, I launched my Reiki business and I did do, uh, work from there for a while, and then I opened up a lovely studio um, in. The heart of Edinburgh, actually, and then COVID, um, the sea problem came along. Didn't want to use the yeah. word there, um, and no, so we all we all got closed down. Yeah. Oh, we seem to have lost Gillian. Oh dear. Hopefully she can come back. Oh, she's here. Good. Yeah. Oh, we lost you there. We lost oh, you there yeah. just for a little bit. Uh, yeah. Um. Anyway, long story short, I started You're working back. online, and I do do reading as well. I do yeah. obviously. Can I just ask something? Yes. Oh. Um, for, for people, because I've heard of Conan Doyle, but I don't know exactly what it is. Can you explain what that is? Yes, it's, uh, it's essentially the the whole the center is a health and well being center but it does house the spiritualist church. They work as separate entities, but within the Conan Doyle Centre, uh, they host uh, mediumship training, um, crystal workshop trainings, they do readings, they, they, they do all sorts of really lovely stuff. It's also a meeting place because they have a lovely coffee room. Um, it's a meeting place for like-minded souls. Um, it's a meeting place for people who are maybe needing a bit of spiritual support. Um, and that was another, ni another nice part of the work as well. And, and obviously we tune into people, we know that they need that help and we can give that support to them. So um, yeah. it is a lovely, yeah, it's a lovely place, lovely teamwork. So, there. so you had your own uh, own shop or therapy room? Yeah, yeah yes, after, I, after that you... Yeah. Yeah. How long did you have that for, the your your shop? And did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. I didn't have it. Well, I had it for a year, but we weren't. I was only able to work there for a few months, and then we got closed because of the pandemic. Oh. Um, yeah. And oh. then, yeah, yeah, it was sad because I had you know the, it was a lovely lovely place, um, and I'm. It would be nice to get somewhere like that again, but it's got to mm. be the right place have the right energy very particular yeah. um mm -hmm. so um we'll see but but as now i'm working online and i can i do do my reiki treatments um distantly but i don't yeah. I, I don't just send energy i do do a full study um and i have a a conversation a cons consultation with my clients before the session and then yeah. I do this and then I then reconnect with them and I tell them what I've found, what I've cleared, um, if I've seen any past life information because I do get that when I do my Reiki as well mm. and obviously I get guidance from the guides. But lately, uh, well for a while, I've become very passionate about people who are repeating cycles in relationships yes who Not who bad. are attracting the same type of person and they can't understand why one person yes. is the same as the last because um, you think because you think you, you think that's it i've changed my archetype that's it i know look, this person's different this person's different and then you can see little traits come in out again because i've had that in the past in my relationship it's like i thought i changed my archetype here but here we go again mm -hmm. you know it's hard isn't yeah. it so that's good to, to help people get past that yeah mm. very much very much so a lot of it actually comes it comes 
back to either childhood wounding or uh, the wounding from a previous relationship, if it has been something like, just for example, a narcissist empath paradigm, they do um, chip away at your self-worth, your self-value, your confidence, um, and you then leave yourself open to accepting or settling for something that's actually not correct for you. Um, and it's I'm passionate about restoring people's self-worth, self-value, their confidence. But before we do that, you have to remove the stuck energy, the blocks that have laid themselves down because of treatments and um, also men men mental conditioning as well, because on a subconscious level, we're affected. So we tell ourselves a yeah. story and then that kind of drives us. So we have to clear that as well as the energies. And some of these can actually be brought over from past lives or passed down from families or learned behaviour. So yeah. this is why I like to dig in and find out what's going on, what their childhood was like. And then obviously psychically, we get downloads and information about what the issues were. You know, was it a particular family member that was maybe affecting mother issues, father issues? You know, it goes on and it's it's very interesting, but you are in a way a bit of a psychic detective um, trying to find out what the root yeah. cause of the problem is. So. Yeah. Oh, it's so beneficial. You know, you can see people just, once that penny drops, you can see that kind of like, oh my goodness, I now know. You know, and it's that relief because you, you um, you're in a child, you keep criticizing your inner child, don't you? That you're, you know, why we, why do we keep doing this? What What is going on? What am I not learning? So, you know, um, with that, you can help heal them. You can help heal their, um, you know, their inner ch child as well, you know? So it's important. So it's good work. Yeah. I don't know if uh, Gillian's frozen there. Oh, she's back. <laughs> you just froze just for a second then. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, carry on. No, I was just saying it is very rewarding because people just don't, they don't realise that it's stemming from their failed relationships or uh, just not being happy or contented within a relationship. Um, they don't realise that it came from something within. And we do, as I said earlier, we do attract what needs to be healed within ourselves also, you know, so we can attract yeah. people who are wounding. So it is, it's, yeah. it's, it's very rewarding because you're releasing people from that um, entrapment in a way and you're giving oh, yeah. them the the passage to ascend and move up and and be on a higher level and attract people who are on a, a similar vibration when they are at a le level of being healed. So it is yeah. very rewarding. And obviously ascension is very important, especially just now, because we want people to be working from a higher vibration. Yeah, to help Mother Earth to ascend and yeah, no, it's really important. It's great. So would you say that your husband has taught you, you know, you know, because sometimes we have to say who was our master teachers in this lifetime? Um, and usually they're the people that hurt us the most. They're Absolutely. the people that usually give us that, that knowledge, you know, that we then can use either by being a victim or we can say, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to use this to enhance myself and also then help others. And, and that's, a, that's um, you know, hands off to you. That's what you've done. Absolutely. And yes, absolutely, I agree. He was the karmic catalyst, <laughs> as I would call him. The karmic catalyst, yeah. yes. Um, and, and he was placed in my life. I mean, we were meant to meet and that was what was meant to happen. Um, but yeah. I rose to the challenge and I passed that part of my test. Um, oh, I do yes. believe that most things in life are tests. Um, they're here to make us grow and expand. And yes, I have learned so much from that part of my life. So much. Yeah. I've gained wisdom. I, I'm, I've empowered myself. 
Um, and it's my great wish and desire to help other people to empower themselves as well. So, yes, he was the catalyst. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can feel it. Mm. I can feel it in your heart. You know, you've got a, a really good heart and you're ready. You're so ready to help others. And, and sometimes, you know, we're sitting there, we're shining our light and we're hoping that people find us. But sometimes we have to do what this is doing, you know, um, you know, um, get interviewed with different platforms and things like that and, um, and, and shine out. Have you reached out to this, a, a lovely guy called Todd Medina and he does soulology. Have you ever, you know, because he's always looking for people to interview. Um, no. So that may be another idea. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really big following. Yeah. I think, yeah, so. I, sorry. I think it's important for as many people to get exposure as possible because we are here for a purpose. And I've always yes. been all things heart anyway you know uh, and people's hearts become enclosed they, they 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 put walls up and then they wonder why they can't find somebody to give and receive on an equal level and the reason mm -hmm. is because sending out subconscious signals saying don't come any closer because i'm guarded you know and i'm still yeah. wounded and they and they might not know that, that they, either. they might not know that they've kind of got this guard up as well no, most of them don't actually. Most of the, them don't. Um, and it's just, it, you have to uh, realise what's going on. Then you have to feel the emotion and release it to heal it. So yeah. that's the process, really. Yeah. Yeah. But it is. It's you see, I, um, before I met Greg, I was definitely in the cynical <laughs> category. It was like, do you know what? I'm happy on my own. I cannot be doing with the drama of relationships. <laughs> I was like, I just can't be doing with it. Um, mm -hmm. But when that right person is supposed to come along, all of those barriers do drop. They, they do drop. But in order to meet the right person, you need to be on your highest vibrational energy to meet the person that's truly your other half. You know, and they have to be have done their work as well you know in order for you to kind of balance out um so that you're not in this drama kind of like you know each person needs healing so so yeah i think you know it's a it's a good thing that you're there to to help with the you know to to notice the blocks mm -hmm. to find out where they come from and then to heal them so that they can be on the highest vibration to meet that special person yeah absolutely yeah it is it's um it is very important i think it's important as well though you said the bound the the barriers come down but we still have to maintain boundaries as well and as empaths mm -hmm. um and probably a lot of people who you know are interested in our shows your shows um a lot of them are empath and we're we need to have good boundaries and we need to have a lot of self-value self-worth because then we don't accept bad behavior if if you want to call it that um so it's striking yeah. a balance it's been aware i think the awareness and clearing things that are causing blockages uh, and then you're 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 on a straight road really to obtaining what you deserve truly really deserve and what you yeah. want to be yeah it is about what we deserve and if there's any kind of emotional um trauma from the past or from childhood um that is that it somehow inside you is saying i don't deserve it mm -hmm. i don't deserve it um and and so that is that is going out there you know in your auric field yes you is. know so you have to realize that you do deserve it um and you have to kind of you know help that healing process Mm. yeah absolutely yeah. and you're quite right most people don't realize that it, it's it's within them as well they they just think it's the other person but um yeah yeah but it, like i said you know like you said i mean if you keep attracting the same person 
learning the same lesson over and over again we have to go into ourselves and say what is this about me that i need to actually work out what's going on you know and that's not going you know um beating your inner child up and saying it's your fault you know it's more to do with kind of you know am i broken is is there something I need to heal, you know, and admitting to it is important. Yeah, absolutely. I think we also have to be very um, cautious that we don't beat ourselves up as well. We have to have a lot of compassion for ourselves. Uh, we tend to, um, you know, beat, beat ourselves with a stick um, if these things do repeat. And uh, we have to be kind to ourselves and we have to love ourselves. A lot of people don't love themselves um, because no. of what they've been through. And again, if you don't love yourself, how can you expect somebody else to love you? And yeah. a lot of people yeah. don't realise, you know, they, they, it's quite sad actually. And a lot of, a lot of the readings that I do do, um, pointing these out, you can actually physically feel some clairsentient as well. Um, you can physically feel the brick in their heart when you point things out yeah. you can just feel their pennies dropped but the bricks yeah. dropped in their heart and, and they're aware of what has actually been going on but that's the beginning of the journey for, for them to heal yeah. be in a much yeah. higher in a much better and happier place so yeah it's so with your readings with your readings um you know how much do you charge how you know how does it work to people because we've got at the bottom here if anybody does want a session um either like a reiki session you know a healing session um or you want a reading then her email address is on the bottom there you can um you can contact uh Gillian directly so what what happens when they contact you, Gillian? How does it go? Well, when, when they contact me, I, I'll ask them when suits them best. Um, I'll obviously give them the details of the costs and then we'll book them in. And then I do my readings by telephone or WhatsApp, Zoom, whatever way they want to conduct it, really. The way mm -hmm. I work just... As I do work for a well-known company as well on the, on telephones, um, and obviously that that is just an audible um, means. So they, they telephone, they go through a switchboard, and then they come come to us um, that way. So, um, but with Reiki again, I would they would contact me, and I would set up the appointment um, and their payment and and that would all go through but with reiki it's uh, as i say it's quite a long session for reiki because i do have the and especially the first session because we would have to take the history and work out what we were working on i would get the downloads and the information from the guides and then we would do the session and then back in touch the the the, the ones following that because they they do recommend you have at least four so this type of work is like peeling an onion or pulling the cork out yeah. of a bottle there's a whole lot of stuff like counseling. yes yeah it's like yes. counseling one session is just not enough is it you yeah. do need to kind of like you know have that that layer system yeah yeah absolutely so uh that's yeah. that's how i work so they can contact me via the email my email um and uh, we can set up the the session that way and obviously we'll discuss what time suits them best because there are obviously different time zones as well. So, but yeah. Can I send you the time zone sheet? Because yes, I know I that we had a session <clears throat> because that can sometimes help when you've got all the different time zones. At the moment, it's a bit messed up because America, their time has gone back oh, uh, or oh, forward um, and we haven't yet you see no. so mm -hmm. it's spring forward isn't it spring forward spring yeah so forward we haven't yet so a week delay so it's really difficult trying to work out the time zones with with everything with america um yeah. so yeah but uh, it, yeah it, within a week it's going to sort it out because i think we go we we change ours next next saturday don't we i think so yeah because it's near the soul the, the, the equinox isn't it the yeah equinox is Next yeah. weekend, but yes, I, I heard somebody say, I'm sure it is. I'm sure, it is. 
Yeah. So Greg and I, um, we've spoken about this as well. Greg and I have been talking about setting up in 5D psychics and therapists um, mm -hmm. where the psychics and therapists can get a decent wage. It uh -huh. is absolutely extortionate what these companies are taking. So can you, is it you that told me um, the difference between what they charge the client and what yes. you get? Yes. Yes, what, can, you, can you tell us that? Can you tell us that? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think you we get paid about, well, it varies actually. So I think some, some of them get paid about £25 an hour, but the company charges about 90 <gasps> Oh, that's terrible! Huge. You see, when we set it, when we set this up, that is going to be our biggest selling point. That whoever gets a reading from these wonderful people, um, or a therapy session, they will be given the um, a decent wage. Absolutely. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. It's <clears throat> yeah, it's um, very bad. It's criminal. Well, I always give my client the absolute best that I do, and it's you'll know yourself if you're on the, if you're sitting on the phone lines, and I'm my calls are usually back to back. Um, there are times when well, I just, but most of the time they are back to back, and you can sit for four, five, six hours on the phone, and you do yeah. get a bit. You know, it's it's hard work. It's very draining working yeah. psychic go on like that all the time and I, I don't think people understand when they call they want answers to questions just like that just like that just like that like um, this isn't it because it's paid per minute so it's like this so yes. that's another thing we would not do per minute we would do a like a, a 20 minute session or a 30 minute session or a that we would do it per session rather yes. than that yes um, well because, I think we would do it to our right. private leaders. Um, and that is the best way. Um, and then you don't have that pressure. People know what they're they're purchasing and 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 what they're they're, they're paying for, and what their time limit. <clears throat> but yeah, it's it, yeah. it is heartbreaking for me though because people do get cut off, and you're just at a crucial point Aww. when you're going to deliver yeah. the answer yeah. or the, the key to their problem, and they don't get it. Yeah, it's really. I find no. it really frustrating. And I always work yeah. from the heart. Um, I always have it. It's, it's quite strange, actually. <laughs> I, I'm interested in people's emotional hearts and emotional bodies, but I yeah. always previously worked with their physical hearts. So, yeah, it's quite interesting. Yeah, that was interesting. So you was a yeah. cardiac um, physiologist. Physiolog that, have I said that right? Yeah, physiologist. cardiac physiologist. Yeah. Think about that job. What was that like? How did, how did oh, your day day work with that? Back in the day, um, it's strange again. It was a job that I kind of fell into. Well, I went looking for it, but I fell into it in a way. I went to school with a girl whose father was a cardiac, uh, um, a cardiac consultant. And he had arranged for her to go and look around a department cardiac department in Edinburgh and I went along just just to chum her really anyway we went along she yeah. wasn't that fussed about what the work entailed but I was fascinated and then a job came up for a student we were called technicians then um because they changed their name so many times but um, and <laughs> I I applied for the job and I got it and I rose steadily up the ranks and um, I worked in two big teaching hospitals in Edinburgh, but I went on to um, specialise in cardiac ultrasound. So that was that was what led me into the corporate side because I worked for a big American company who sold um, ultrasound equipment. So I demonstrated and sold. I was applications and sales, as they called us. So and then I travelled. Wow. We had to trade shows and I travelled all over America, travelled all over Europe and my territory, believe it or not, was the whole of the UK and Ireland. I used to go to Ireland to help. We had distributors there and I helped them as well as cover my whole territory in the UK as well. So it was it was a busy, busy job, busy job, but I loved it. Yeah. 
and then I gave it yeah. up to raise my son. Yeah. So, so you, you know, because Greg's had to have that done. They had to see what was going on with his heart. So he, he had to have the scan. Um, so that would have been your job, wouldn't it? To yeah. have a look and see what was yes. going on in in the heart area. Yeah. So what can you see? Can you see kind of the pump working? Can you, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm fascinated by that. Yeah, for, for echocardiography, you see the actual heart, the structure of the heart. So you see the pumping of the heart you look at the heart muscle you look at the, the heart muscle and um, the makeup of the heart muscle because you can get infiltrative disease that causes the heart muscle to look different uh you can you look at all the valves you look at the size of the chambers uh we look for re or, uh, a regurgitation a leaking valve and um, so that's what you can yep. see on ultrasound and then uh, uh, there's another type of ultrasound. We don't perform this side. Um, it's usually the medics, but we do help them. And it's transesophageal. So there are limitations to ultrasound and um, the, the sound waves don't travel readily through bone or air. And obviously the lungs are, you know, around about where the, the, the heart is. Uh, so that can obscure the image. And if people are large, so they've got a lot of, um, adipose tissue that's blocking the signal or they have a lung disease which is quite common then you don't get such good images from the front of the chest transthoracically as we call it so you can uh, you can do another procedure called a transesophageal echo where they actually swallow a specific probe so it goes down the esophagus and they can image from the other oh, side wow. and instructions in the way yeah. um, so and th those images are really fantastic as well. So, um, but that's to that's wow. to look at the heart. If you wanted to look at the coronary arteries supplying the heart muscle, you then go into a cardiac cath lab setting, and they use little tubes that go up into your arteries, and then they put uh, dye into the tube, and that goes into the arteries or the arterial. Uh, branches of, of the, the supply to the heart and then they can see uh, using x-rays where there are blockages or narrowings and then people will go on and, and have um, angioplasties or if they can't do angioplasty then they will then go on and have bypass surgery to get rid of that area so that the heart muscle is supplied readily when the demand is there when they exercise or exert themselves. Yeah. Because people get Greg angina. Had, yeah. Greg had to have a quadruple heart bypass. Yeah. He had to have. Yeah. yeah. We can, it's a, it's we can be exposed to that from a, a hereditary viewpoint, but um, most of the time it's um, a mixture of old age and lifestyle that, that then, you know, everything furs up, everything gets a bit rusty as we get older, and that's just part of ageing. Uh, and that's, yeah. that's how things occur but yeah but he's doing well yeah. Meg. <laughs> he's doing well yeah he's doing really well Bless he's going through the night sweats at the moment which isn't nice for him um whenever he has anesthetic it kind of comes out it's like he can mm -hmm. smell the anesthesia you know Horrible. and and it comes out in his his sweats but his body getting rid of it you know it yeah so, yeah you've got yeah. to look at that yes it's 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 offloading and within a few Fresh days. Load, as frustrating as it is. Yeah. Be yeah. Awesome. So now um, I bet you, because you've had that kind of background, when you're doing healing, would it be the case that you can actually see, psychically see inside a body when you're doing the Reiki session? Can you see things like that? Uh, what I get given is, a, is an image, basically, um, via my guides. But I, I get the image psychically. Yeah. That's how they work with me at the moment. Um, I do know that the you know they're always working on us, and and now and again they'll throw in a few surprises and uh, oh that we've given you this little yeah. gift and you can work this way now. But yeah, um, yeah it's yeah. it's very interesting. They 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 give me images of the chakras, so they just give me a disc and they'll show me if there's a they represent it like a black layer or a black sludge or a little black rock or something you know where there's a blockage um but uh, obviously i hear 
clear audiently as well. They'll, they'll let me know what's what's what. So it, it, it is teamwork, and it always fascinates me. And I just think they're brilliant. You know, um, the, the the information that they give you to do the job because we're all we're all looking for the same outcome really to help people and make them feel better. You know, and um, let yeah. them let them live a a, a a lifestyle on a higher vibration. So, yeah. do you get help from the off welders as well? Galactic energy help. As yes, well? yes, I do actually. I never uh, about five years ago I started. Uh, I do automatic writing, and I've written lots and lots of these codes. Uh, now I, I'm aware that it's coming from different sources because the writing does change, and it started off just with my own guide. So I have volumes and volumes of information which is really fascinating as well. Um, and then the code started coming through and um, lots of um, what looks to me like grid references and they've given me a lot of information. Uh, and then I started yeah. um, <coughs> excuse me, channeling a language that I, I couldn't decipher and I even with research I couldn't but it's actually light language and I do light language um, pictures as well it's, it's really lovely um, <clears throat> excuse me and I know they, they do actually connect me I do channel them sometimes for some of the star seeds that come through to me for readings that they're they're quite drawn to me which I, I find um quite flattering in a, in a nice way um, but they come and I fill in the gaps with regards to the ascension symptoms they're going through or what's happening or what the projections are or whatever uh, mm. and that's nice because sometimes you feel a bit lost if uh, you just need that little bit of information that, that, that can then you know free you up a little bit more um, so they come through to me but I do channel like people, I've had some. They, they, they're very non-emotional. <laughs> they they speak. Um, they're very monotone, and they don't. Um, they don't uh, fluff anything out. They're very straight and direct to the point. Um, but I have actually seen them. They have appeared to me. Um, wow. I went. I went for a short break. Um, up near a place called Blair Athol, actually, um, in Highland, Scotland. Um, and where I was staying, the the sky was very, very clear. So I went out, outside to stargaze, I suppose you would say. And I, I looked over to one side and it must have only been about 30 yards away. But I looked over and I thought, hmm, what's that? And then I looked to the other side and there was another, it was a person, another person standing on the other side and it was almost like you know um the cartoons rubbing your eyes to thinking you were yeah did something yeah. that wasn't there what my thing is. yeah yeah but in actual fact they were and they were light beings and they were just pure white translucent light um and they just stood there and they were in the, sh the shape of a of a a human they, they were in the shape of a human and their eyes seemed to get slightly brighter and then a bit dimmer uh, and that when I looked I thought well, there is something definitely there um, but strangely enough and I don't really know why I reacted that way but I just thought oh I'm going in now <laughs> and as I turned yeah. to go in telepathically they communicated with me and said um, um, please do not fear we come in peace that was the message right. that I got um, and they obviously disappeared after that but I do have a lot of visitors above my house at night time, um, mm. which is quite fascinating. In fact, the, the, for a few months, there were lots and lots. And I do believe that we're going to get many more coming back to um, let themselves be known to us. Um, so yes. that is quite fascinating as well. But yes, um, I'm very aware that these energies connect with me. I'm very aware when I channel them because it's very, very powerful energy. And um, I'm tuned into the, the switch over. You'll, you'll know that yourself yeah. with regards to who you get messages from or who's close by. You feel the, 
the change in the energy. Um, but it is extremely yeah. powerful and they, they are here to help us um, and they're yes. encouraging us to help others so that we can yeah. benefit the whole planet and the, the you know, humanity, basically. So, yeah. but yeah, that yeah. was that was quite a privilege um, to see to see my uh, visitors. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Oh, a bit wonderful. Weary. Yeah. Yeah, you you do, but you know, most of the, these beings, if you're on a high vibrational energy, you're gonna get the higher vibrational um, yeah. off worlders. There are yeah. others. We all know that there are others, and mm -hmm. you know. It, it's just something that we have to kind of bat away, you know, as best we can, okay, with that. But if it feels right from the heart and you feel comfortable with them, then, you know, I think it's lovely to communicate with these off-worlders. Yes. It's wonderful. Yes, it is. It is, it is very yes. nice. Um, and they have such, uh, I mean, the, the technology and the, the knowledge that they actually have is just absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing, and they do gift it. They do gift it to humanity as well. They they have gifted a lot, but it's been hidden from us actually. So hopefully that will yeah. come out and be yeah. revealed. But yeah, they are. They're here to. They're here to help. And we all have links. Well, so what? Sorry. What about the crystals, the crystal healing? Um, um, do you do kind of like sessions just crystal healing or does that automatically come in when you do the Reiki? I, I always incorporate it into the Reiki because I balance the chakras using the crystals. Yeah. But I do do, um, and, and you know, it can be very quick as well and very effective, but I, I can just do a, a very quick crystal healing session, just, uh, you know, a sort of an emergency session if you like. Um, and uh, I love clear quartz because it's the master healer. You can program it to do anything you want. Um, and yeah. um, I've had some really significant um, um, changes within people just within a few seconds. You know, they really feel a huge shift in their heart chakra uh, if you, you concentrate on that with your little crystal. Wow. <laughs> you feel like Harry Potter, yeah. you know? With your crystal, it's like a crystal but, um, wand you use. A wand. I have a. I use a crystal point actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, it's a very rough crystal point, but I, I absolutely love it, and that's my favourite for, you know, working on people. And I, I, yeah. I, I make a little bed around their chair, and then I, I ask those crystals to join together, and that really empowers the actual healing itself. And then obviously the, the guides help out. I mean, we all the energies join in. So I just always think I have a really good working relationship with the, the, the energies that I do work with. And they know what my intention is before I start. I always put it out there. And they, they come along and help with that as well. So... But the crystals are, uh, I mean, Mother Nature herself is is just amazing. I mean, you can go and touch the bark of a, of the trees and they all have a different vibration. They all have a different healing ability uh, and they're connected to the yes. the earth as well. So um, I, I think people yeah. don't realise how um, healing Mother Nature is. You go beside the sea oh. or in the salt water yeah. or beside run, a running river. Yep. And it's very healing as yep. well. So I always recommend to clients, you know, especially the ones that are on, on the telephone lines, um, you know, to go out and do that because they will be given help to lift some of the dense energies that are around them or within them. Yeah. Short of coming to me, that is, you know. Um, but and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the barefoot as well, uh, yes. barefoot on the sand or on the grass or you know in the leaves it's it's important and it? it's important to kind of really ground with mother nature mm -hmm. it's very it is very much so yeah. especially just now with the ascension symptoms that people are suffering um they they need their their, their grounding to be really really 
good and secure actually because that's enabling the the light codes to come in because we are being bombarded at this moment in time as well with the energies from the yeah. the galactics and and the sun um and it's it it just helps people stay grounded and and not get that airy fairy yeah wonky way that the people probably don't understand what's going on a lot of them don't but yeah no it's very important to ground yeah yeah so um so how um how can people get in contact with you so it's just the email address you've got there do you yeah, have a website have a, uh, um, the website's under construction at the moment so that'll obviously be added right. to face there is a facebook page as well um okay so that's uh jillian jillian reed basically on facebook um, there is a Reed Reiki page as well, but I think if they go to, uh, I, I mentioned earlier that um, there was a bit of um, strange business going on with um, a group called I <laughs> or the M's, <laughs> and I feel that they're at, uh, they're perhaps blocking um, my Reed Reiki page because I haven't I'm not getting very many people to con contacting me I feel there's something funny going on it has the, the page itself has changed so um but um Gillian Reed on Facebook or uh Reed Reiki or uh Reed Reiki at gmail.com they're probably the best contacts if anybody has any queries or inquiries so Oh, that's lovely. And, you know, you're so open as well. You know, they can reach out to you uh, and ask anything, can't they, really? Oh, yes. Um, also about their trauma. I mean, let's face it, there's some people out there that have had trauma mm -hmm. um, and you're able to understand, you know, mm -hmm. not just sympathise, empathise um, with them and work with them. So you're really kind of like a psychic counsellor as well aren't you yes because I'm feeling yes. people get that um that counseling with you they get that feeling of you know you know the love that you can give you know you understand it yeah absolutely absolutely and if I can help anyone uh, I always give them a bit of a cheat sheet as well because it's almost like psychically I can see or I know the sequence of events because there are patterns but then all, all behaviours, there are patterns, there are groups of people that behave the same way. And I kind of, you know, psychically, I get, oh, you belong to this group and this is what's going to, you know, this is why this is happening and this is why this is happening. So I, I do give them a bit of a cheat sheet and, uh, you know, encourage them to do inner work, to raise their vibration, to clear the blockages so that they then um, attract a different type of person because the universe is a bit canny they're a bit crafty um if you have to learn a lesson they will flip you in the face with a feather and if you don't get it that time i always say um strange analogy perhaps but this is how i always put it they'll hit you on the back of the head with a brick and if you don't get it that time they will yes, come and run yeah. you over with a 20 ton truck yeah. so the lessons they, they get yeah, yeah. deeper you know to get one lesson and to be taught it uh you know if you if you ignore the the signs and you just don't take any advice then you'll get it again in a different person but the severity will be much greater and that is yeah. truly how it works <laughs> and so do you believe that this is all kind of like something that we promised to do before we came down here do you yes, think it's all linked absolutely. with that Yes, I, I believe that before we incarnate in this lifetime, we, we sign a contract. And within that contract, there are lessons, if you want to call them that, that we have to go through and hopefully pass. Um, and yeah. we have we've agreed to do those. Uh, but when we come here, our memory of that signing is completely scrubbed, wiped. Um, and then you're presented with the pathways now i there are many routes to one end result and i do believe that and i feel that's where our free will comes in because you're going to go from a to b yeah. but you could go via several different routes and these are the parts that we get to choose for ourselves i do believe um 
So, oh, but yes, yes, it's part of our soul contract, part of our soul contract. And uh, a lot of it or some of it can be brought from a previous lifetime. So if you didn't complete a task with a certain person in a previous lifetime, yeah. they represent in this lifetime um, and I'm hearing the fight goes yeah. on. It, it, you know, you resume that uh, that lesson, and yeah. hopefully this time you will you will get it. But um, I do believe that uh, yeah, yeah, there are a lot of people that I've had in my life this lifetime that that I have met in previous lifetimes, especially the big one. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah. I did a, a wonderful class the other day and it was past life recall um, oh, and awesome. there was a lot of kind of like wow moments there where it's like mm. do you recognize you know when they're, when they're going under it's like do you recognize anybody um, from this lifetime in your past life there and there was a lot of recognitions that go mm -hmm. on and they, those emotions and then the work starts afterwards actually where you they have to say okay so why were they in my life what did I learn what was going yeah. on so have you ever had any encounters with past life energies that you've been picking up with people yes uh -huh. yes quite often when I'm doing Reiki I um, because of the guides that I work with I I, I I do travel into their past lifetimes and I'm shown certain scenes uh, that obviously is um, part of the wounding that they've carried forward with them um a lot of people bring yeah. forward fear or they've been um enslaved by some nasty person in a past life and uh, similar things happened in this lifetime yeah. and uh, so it repeats and we uh, um we sometimes can change that timeline actually and 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 get rid of the issue that they bring forward with them it's 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 very interesting, um, and I am shown quite unusual circumstances, but it all fits into place. You know, it's it is it's it's very um very good. I have a good team of guides, a good team of guides, um, and I work I work with the ascended masters um, and the archangels as well, the angelic realm, uh, as well as healing guides and uh, my ancestors also. So. Um, they all just pop in and out. Like, you know, you know how they work. They pop in as required, or yeah. um, you know, required, if, yeah. if, if if it's a big job, then they'll bring in higher energies. Or some of the sometimes the galactics appear. Uh, I, I certainly know that mm -hmm. um, because of the energy that I feel. Yeah. It's it's very very powerful. Um, but yeah. yes, it's 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 very interesting. The past life stuff is very interesting. I believe I've had a past life way back from the healing chambers in Egypt, um, but I've not actually had a, wow. a regression myself. Um, but that's quite interesting. And um, we're in a phase where we're all um, waking up or remembering what we did do in past lifetimes and we're bringing that information yeah. uh, forward to this lifetime to enable us to be the best healers or counsellors or uh, mediums or whatever. Uh, we're bringing that in and it's being activated now so that we have all of the, the capabilities yeah, uh, to use. So it's very exciting all those tools for us. that we've learned to yeah. Yes. yeah. 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 It it's fascinating. Um, I couldn't be anything else other than the spiritual person I am. It's actually part of my DNA. Yeah. It's, it's spiritual. Um, I, you know, you you find people are, um, you know, waking up to their spiritual side and and thinking I'm whole now. You know, yes. once that once they find that spiritual side, and they connect with it, it's like, oh my god, what have I been missing this time? You know, yeah. I'm I'm so much more powerful than I realised. You know, I'm mm. so much more in control of my future and my destiny. You know, and it's all, all in the thought and your intentions in life. Um, and we don't always get it right. You know, we're always kind of like trying to, you know, we, we talk the talk, but sometimes we don't do the things that we should do, do we? You know, but, yeah, you know, well, we're human. And, you know, this is this is how it goes. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's um I I do feel that um being spiritual is um it's much more accepted now and people that more people are awake they've they've realized that there's another part to to being on this earth and it is much more accepted um and i i feel that people are are looking into that side of their life um because we you know there are different areas and we're not whole unless we actually um, embrace the spiritual side of us. And we are all very powerful. We all have gifts that we don't know are there. Everybody is psychic. It's like a muscle. You just have to use it. But it has been um, suppressed throughout the years, throughout the decades, you know. Um, and, yeah. uh, and we're breaking free from that now. We're breaking free from that. Oh yeah, yeah. They, you see, the the dark ones. They do not want us to learn how powerful we are. You know, no. when the slave race was beaten, it was like you know suppress things, suppress the pineal gland, um, suppress you know your vision. You know of of what you know, like a knowing. So yeah, yeah. But the, the awakening has began, and it is not going anywhere. It's just building and building and building. And Gillian, you're doing your part by helping other people to ascend, helping other people to find their own power. And and that is amazing. It really yeah. is amazing. I can Thank feel you. your okay. need to kind of get working, you know. And so, yes. you know, you've already been to the telephone lines, but, you know, you want to build up your business now. So if there is anybody out there who would like a session um, with Gillian, um, please reach out to her. Gillian reads at uh, don't get the s. Gillian reads at gmail dot com. That's right. Okay, and Facebook page Gillian reads. Okay, so please reach out to Gillian. Have you got anything else you want to say before we go, Gillian? No, just it's been lovely to connect with you again, as always. Um, and it's fantastic that we're we're making people aware and that you and Greg have got your platform. You're making people aware of what's going on in the world. Um, letting people realise that we have been enslaved in a way, kept down, dummied down, not allowed to be who we are meant to be. Um, all the fear that's yeah. been um, projected from that box on the sideboard that people watch on a nightly basis, you know. I haven't watched television for about three years now. I don't have one. No, no, man. Um, don't need it. And it's I watch just... Netflix. Um, most people on YouTube now, don't they? It's yes. YouTube is their new TV. Yeah, absolutely. And there's some yeah. very interesting, very interesting stuff uh, on YouTube. Although it can be censored, but... Um, there are some really good channels that are out there, and uh, they're they're very um, educational f for all of us. Um, but I do believe there's a lot. I can feel the energy um, that's shifted a lot anyway, and with the planetary aspects changing quite dramatically. Uh, we've got the equinox coming up, uh, and uh, that's that's a significant time period. Uh, I keep getting the twenty sixth as well for some reason. I don't know what it is. You know, you get told right. little tidbits, but you don't get told the whole thing. Yes. Um, but moving on, no. I do feel that there are big shifts coming in and big exposures. Um, yeah, so we'll need to just watch the space. Um, We've obviously got oh, yeah. uh, Greg and your predictions as well, which are fascinating. I love to watch those programs with you and Greg. Uh, yeah. We're usually we usually on tonight, aren't we? At um, yes. um, doing our global pictures, but he just isn't well enough, I don't think, to be able to do tonight. But, but I will still be coming on um, later on on Tuesday because it's Tuesday. Say the fourteenth of March, twenty twenty-three. I'd say that earlier, but yeah, it's Tuesday. It's uh, yeah, Tuesday the fourteenth of March, twenty twenty-three. Um, I'll be coming on later anyway, whether Greg with me or not. I'm still yeah. going to come on because I feel that people need it because um, yes. there's huge changes happening at the moment. 
it's like yes, the is. bank's collapsing yeah. and all sorts. Mm. Yeah, there is. Yeah, and uh, but also the ascension. And as I said earlier, we're getting bombarded by energies, and um, people aren't feeling a hundred percent just because they're 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 absorbing mm. these energies coming from the the galaxies and yeah. the, the sun and whatnot. So uh, sometimes they just need yes. to know that it's okay. This is normal. It'll pass, and you know, self care, hydration. The normal stuff uh, plenty sleep if yeah. you need it eat what you want because we've all gone through the times where we're, yeah. we've emptied our cupboards on one day and then not wanted to eat for three days after that um and that was all part and parcel yeah. of it, isn't it so i think quite so strange yeah but they, sometimes they just need reassurance yeah. that it's okay as well and um yeah it's nice to be able to give support even just a smiling face is, is support to some people just oh yeah well. For yeah. sure, yeah. I smile mm -hmm. at people randomly all the time. <laughs> In fact, I went into like? London. You know what London? You know what London's yeah. like. Yeah. I went into yeah. London once. I was on my own, and I was smiling at people. And I asked, I've asked three times, how much? I was like, what? <laughs> 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 I was just like, no, mm. you know, I'm yeah. not selling anything here. No, so it's yeah, so funny. It's funny. Isn't it? It's a very close you know, place. You can't... I find it quite closed. Yeah. Uh, you know, they don't like to interact on a an emotional level no. in any shape, way, or form uh, uh, within a it. public space. Yes, <laughs> but it's a shame. Um, and you know what? I would still smile at everybody, even yes. though I don't care. I'd yeah, still do it. I'd still do it. Shine the light where you can. Yeah, absolutely. Too right. Absolutely. I do as well, and uh, you do. You actually feel the energy change somebody's scowling away and you smile and they think oh because they're not used to it and you just feel that that lift um when when you know you've just done such a simple thing but you've actually maybe made somebody's morning or even day you know so yeah but yeah, no, we, yeah we have to sure. the simple things that need to we need to keep you know doing that for people that we meet and um who cares what people, what other people think? If they think we're strange, I don't care anymore. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care. Oh, it was an absolute pleasure spending this time with you. Oh, uh, thank hang you. on in in the room. We'll say goodbye to the people, but hang on into the room um, afterwards, and um, you know we'll just uh, um, because it, I think we've got re the recording has to download, so we we have to wait a moment. So. Um, anyway, everybody, thank you so much for joining us here and um, and spending time watching um, this uh, interview. We're going to be doing more interviews. Um, I think Greg's got some ideas on interviews as well. So um, we're going to be doing separate interviews. We're going to be doing interviews together. So there's all sorts of things happening within 5D. So, you know, don't get to subscribe and hit the like button and share, um, yeah. please. That would be amazing. So, um, oh, it's frozen again. <laughs> so anyway, um, bye for now, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thanks and, for having. Uh,